Over the past week, I partnered with Kajabi to literally help dozens of YouTube entrepreneurs to better turn their viewers into buyers of what they're selling. That inspired me to create this free course titled A Five-Part YouTube Organic Marketing Guide. All the timestamps are down below, and if you would like me to review your channel for free, then there is a form that you can fill out down below. But starting with the first step, which is the most important, you must craft an irresistible offer. So in order to do this, you have to be crystal clear about what problem you solve and for who. In your mind, you may already know that, but if someone's coming across your YouTube or on your website for the first time, we don't want them to have to use a lot of brain energy to try to figure that out. So the more specific, the better. So for example, I was helping a flute player and she was telling me that she helps people who are intermediate to get to that advanced level. But when I was looking at her stuff, that, that wasn't immediately obvious that she didn't help beginners. And so the clearer, the better. And a lot of people could really benefit from a tagline in their banner, in their about section, on their website. And so here's a good template for a tagline. I help a person solve problem or reach desire through this process or an X amount of time. So for example, that woman could have said, I help intermediate flute players get to that advanced level in 45 days, hypothetically. And so how can you be clear and specific across your YouTube channel and your website? Give it a good look and ask yourself, is this attracting my target audience? Or is it not clear and specific to the point where people can get confused? I also encourage you, um, before you create your irresistible offer, to do market research. So, for example, one time I was helping a men's dating coach. And so he was like, oh, I want to create a membership. And so we were looking online. He talked to his target audience in person. And they were saying, like, yeah, we don't really <laughs> want to sit around and talk about our feelings and our experiences with dating. And so it's good that he did research and he didn't take the time to actually build out that membership um, so that he wasn't wasting his time. So that's something that's really important. And I always tell my clients that you want to um, create offers that are, one, in alignment with what your target audience wants and needs, but also in alignment with what your ideal lifestyle is. So, for example, just because other people in your industry are offering, let's say, a membership and the audience really likes it, doesn't mean you have to do that if it's not in alignment with your lifestyle. If you don't like to do a consistent membership, you can maybe do something like workshops every few months, or maybe you can do one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe you could sell passive courses on the side. And so it's really important to have that conversation with yourself about what's in alignment with my ideal lifestyle. And a lot of people feel guilty about that. You know, they feel bad, like, oh, like, you know, I see everyone else is offering a membership, so that means I should do it. But no, like, be real with yourself. It's okay to want to create your dream life. That's why I go by Aria the Creator, because you are the creator of your dream life, future, and business. And so once you know what it is that you're offering, let's say you do want to offer like a course or one-on-one -on -one consulting, I encourage you to determine how you can make that offer irresistible. So what are some elements that you can add to it? So for example, maybe there are certain bonuses and make it irresistible maybe for a limited time you can have like a special deal so currently this is saint patrick's week and i have 10 percent off the first month of all my accelerator packages you see how that's irresistible you see why that would make someone want to act now and so you too maybe you can have a timer on your website maybe you can say the next three spots get this discount or maybe a bonus could be like an extra one hour session with you could be a resource that you offer and so when you have irresistible components that makes people want to act now because oftentimes when people see an offer like you know we're humans and so they put it off like oh I'll come back to this later there's no reason to act now and then we all know that later becomes never so that's the first step is creating an irresistible offer and the second step is designing a high converting landing page for your product or your service some people have the mentality especially on youtube they think oh like let me first grow an audience and then i'll start making my offer and you can absolutely do that, but I, I encourage my clients to first create the landing page and get the offer ready so that you are fully maximizing your income potential. Because even me, like, don't think you need to have, like, a big audience. Even me, like, when I first started out, I had 200 subscribers when I got my first $3,000 paying client because I started making offers. My clients have done that as well. This woman right here had 60 subscribers and she filled out all the spots for her workshop and she too, she attracted a $3,000 paying client. And so have that mentality going in that you wanna maximize your income potential. So I'm telling you, you will be kicking yourself if one of your YouTube videos really takes off 
and there was no call to action with a link down below for that offer. So don't think of it like selling. Think of it like you're offering your help on, a, on an additional level. And so when it comes to creating a landing page, I do recommend Kajabi. Many of you are already on it, but if you would like to start with Kajabi, um, if you use my link, you will get a one hour strategy session with me where I will import my free templates. I'll give you a tour. I'll show you how it works. But just know that regardless of the platform, when the brain lands on a landing page, it's doing two things. One, it's trying to conserve energy. So if you have a website that's very overwhelming, very confusing, all these animations, big wall of text, you see why the brain would have to use a lot of energy to try to figure out like what is it you do. And so an overwhelmed brain is less likely to take that next step on the page, whether it's to buy now, apply now, whatever it is, download now for free. And so try to make it easy, make it simple. Less is more. Let's talk about the different elements of a high converting landing page. You're more than welcome to look at my landing page down below, just as an example, just to model. We're obviously probably in different niches, but I do have all the elements of a high converting page. And so the first crucial element, and this is what you want to have towards the top, very top of the page is a headline. This can be based off of your tagline, but you want it to be crystal clear what problem you solve and for who and also how you do it. So do you have a specific process? Do you help people in a certain time frame? What exactly is it that you do to help people? Make that clear in the headline. I also encourage you to have a video. Why? Because it builds that extra layer of trust. Because if I send your landing page to, let's say, a buddy who could benefit from your offerings, and they didn't see your YouTube content, they don't know who you are, Usually people need to gain a sense of someone before they pull out their credit card. They say that video on a landing page increases conversions by over 80%. I learned that at Tony Robbins Business Mastery. So just having a video on there can increase your conversions. And so in the video, there's a few things that you want to include. Again, you want to clarify what problem you solve and for who and also how you do it. So do mention the features like, you know, mention that this is like a course or a membership Mention how long it is, your program, maybe it's a 12-week course. So you want to explain that, but also you want to explain not just the features, but also the transformation that you provide for someone. Because no one buys just a course. Nobody buys coaching. What they're really investing in is what it's going to do for them. What's the big transformation that your offerings is going to provide for them? So share that. This is how your life is going to change or your business is going to change and get better. And it's a good idea to be specific, share testimonials, you know, say you helped specific people get certain desires so that you can inspire people about what's possible for them as well. In the video, you also want to explain a little bit about you, what makes you the expert, what makes you credible, and that, that will also get people to know, like, and trust you. And then in the video as well, you want to explain the next step. You know, tell them, click any of the green buttons down below to apply now, to buy now, whatever it is. And so the video is the next piece. And this is really important for a mobile cell phone because when you open the page on a phone, you should clearly see the headline, the video, and some text on there as well. If you open a landing page and it's just a big wall of text, like you can imagine, you're likely going to lose people. Another component that's good to add on the landing page is your process. In other words, what are the steps that you carry people through or what are the different categories that you're going to focus on with them? Doesn't necessarily need to be step by step, but for example, um, I have this five step process that I like to display on my landing pages so that people can clearly see the steps that I'm going to go through with them. You know, and that makes them more comfortable and confident taking that next step because they know what it is that I'm going to do with them. It's crystal clear. They could see a graphic and I would encourage you if you have a process to create an infographic. Why? Because there's different types of learners. There's people who are visual, there's people who like to read, and there's also people who are auditory. So just hearing you in the video explain it as well will help them better understand what you do. And so some of you don't have your process outlined, but just putting that on a landing page will give people like a, it's like a click. It's like, oh, click, I see how this person or this business can help me. And so I would encourage you to use Canva to create an infographic. You could just simply go to the search bar, type in hypothetically five steps and use one of the templates that comes up. And then you could put that on the landing page. So that's really effective to have on there. 
And of course, on the landing page, you do want to outline the features. So for example, for one of my offers, I mentioned that there's group calls. I mentioned that they'll get my five-step playbook. They have the option for one-on-one. -on -one. And so yes, people need to know these features before they pull out their credit card. So definitely have your features on the page that people know what they're getting, but you also want to have a section on there that communicates that transformation. How is their life going to look different? How are you going to help them overcome their problems? What solutions are you going to implement? And how is that really going to change their life? So I like to have a section on there just about the transformation. And then of course you could also have testimonials on there as well so that people can see examples, but that's really what gets people in the door saying yes. By the way, these sections aren't in a particular order, but another section that you want to have on your landing page is just a section where you clarify the offer Obviously, maybe you have different tiers like me, different packages, and so you want to clearly outline what comes in each. It's a good idea to create a chart as well, similar to what I have, because again, people have different styles of intaking information. Maybe you can display the investment. I know for my packages, some of them are customizable. Some people need a done-for-you funnel, so that's why I don't have my pricing on there to not confuse people. But maybe you have like a buy now button, and of course, you'd want to display the, the pricing for that. And then I also recommend having an about you section. So this about you section, it's important to, yes, explain why you are the expert, explain like what you know, how you know it. Maybe you have X number of years of experience. Maybe you helped X amount of clients. Maybe you have a certain degree or award in something. Definitely put that on there. Share your story briefly. Don't ramble on for, you know, <laughs> pages and pages about you. Um, but it's good to share your story. but to also position yourself as the guide. You know, maybe for example, like you teach about weight loss and you can say, you know, I used to weigh 400 pounds. Now I slimmed down to like, I don't know, 180. And then you can say like, I went through this journey and that inspired me to help other people as well who are struggling with weight loss. So you see how you position, position yourself as the guide there to help other people solve their problems. So it's always good to share your story, even in your YouTube content, but always do so with that intention to help people. Now you're on a mission to help them. So that's important as well. And then the last element on the landing page that you can add is just simply an FAQ se section, because when people are going through it, they may have common questions and maybe you addressed it further in the page, but you can address it again. So I know for me, like I clarify on my page the day and time of my group coaching, but I also put it in the FAQ just for, you know, so that, so that it's easy to find, easy to read. And as you are talking to potential clients, if questions frequently come up, add it in the FAQ section. And usually that goes towards the bottom of the page. And usually people know that. They'll look at the bottom and look there to um, see if you address their common questions. So that's the second step is creating a high converting page. The next step, number three, is to drive massive traffic to your products and services using YouTube. You really don't need to run paid ads. You can absolutely do that, but I actually took a course once where I was learning how to run paid ads and I was doing everything right, you know, setting up the ad properly. I had a really high converting like page and I, and like I got some like, I didn't get any conversions, but I got some clicks on it, but I was putting a lot of effort. Like people think like, oh, running ads is like easier because you don't have to make as much content. You, If you run ads, you're going to have to run like a lot of different trials to get a winning ad. And then even once you, you have a winning ad, you can't always run it because, you know, it gets old <laughs> over time. The point is, is that you can get a lot of conversions just from organic traffic, free traffic on YouTube that you don't have to spend money on ads. And the cool thing is, is once you have a YouTube video that's converting, you can technically like, you, you could stop making content. And if the video keeps appearing in search, then if you have the call to action in the video and the link is down below and it works, I mean, that's like leads and sales on autopilot. It sounds too good to be true, but that's why I chose to teach YouTube because what other platform does the does the post continue to live on and on and on you know like usually after two to three days no one really sees a post on instagram or on facebook unless you put ads into it and so let's talk about how to drive massive traffic using youtube and if you're just starting out it can take time on youtube to get that initial traction growth is typically in an exponential curve in other words if you stay consistent then you will experience exponential growth i've seen it across my clients when we look in their analytics,
but there's a few things that you want to pay attention to when you're posting organic content so that you're not just spinning your wheels. So the first thing is it's really important to create content that your target audience is actually searching for. And so, for example, um, let's say you are in a niche where let's say that you help people hypothetically with crypto and you title a video, how to reach your goals. You see how that's not clear and specific? You know, no one really is typing in how to reach your goals. Maybe some people, but they're in your niche. They're being more specific. They have more specific questions. And so the more specific, the better. So instead of, you know, how to reach your goals, you can say like, you know, five steps to, I don't know, make start making money with cryptocurrency, hypothetically. You see how that's clear? You see how there's keywords in there? And so there's two things that YouTube cares about. There's two ways that your video will start to appear in search and it'll start to be recommended to people. So YouTube only cares if one, people are clicking your video, and two, if they're watching your video. That is it. People over complicate the YouTube algorithm, but it really comes down to human psychology that you're working with, not so much with the algorithm, because think about it, what's gonna get someone to click on a video? It's really three things, kind of four things, but the three main ones is because of the topic. The topic is of interest, it's relevant, people are coming across it in search. Um, the second one is the thumbnail. The thumbnail is usually what catches people's eyes. So even from the thumbnail, you want it to be clear and specific what the video is about. You want the text to be very legible. When I was reviewing people's channels, I saw a lot of text that was too small, too thin, and written in cursive. But a lot of Gen Zers actually aren't learning cursive in school. And even generally speaking, it's much harder to read than plain font. And it's good to have a font that feels good to you. Yes, but if people can't read it, that's a problem. It's not going to serve your audience if they can't read it and they can't even consume what you're offering in the video. And so what you want to do is make sure it's clear and easy to read. And then also the title. You want to have search-based keywords in there, but you also want to have an element of intrigue. So for example, like maybe you could put must watch now or nobody knows this. You know, like phrases like that that'll get people to want to click. Like five hidden secrets that you can like add on to the end of the title is very effective. And then the fourth reason why someone will click on a video is to connect with someone. So if your audience really likes you and they really connect with you, it's kind of like you could post about anything and people will watch it because of the human connection. And so, you know, I always, I was telling people in the reviews that if your audience is connected with you, consider in your thumbnails, putting a picture of your face so that people can immediately identify it as yours. When I was looking at some of these YouTube channels, I, would I was looking at some of their thumbnails side by side, and I had no idea that um, all the thumbnails would have been from the same YouTuber. And so you wanna have like consistent branding, but of course have some variety. Change up the photo, change up the text, maybe change up the graphics. You don't wanna have all of your thumbnails exactly the same, exact same photo, exact same text. Because psychologically, again, we're working with human psychology, if I watch one video from a YouTuber and I'm like, oh, that was a great video. I loved it. And then a few days later, I see another video pop up, pop up on my feed with the exact same thumbnail. I'm going to think, oh, I already watched this video because the thumbnail looks so similar. Same text, same, same everything. And so you want to have a consistent brand look, but also have variety. Mix it up. Mix up the, to the topic. Mix up the thumbnail a bit and also the title as well so that people can distinguish each one as yours, but also as a new different video. The second thing that YouTube cares about is not only do people click, but do people watch the video? And so with that, like imagine like if you're if everyone's clicking on your video, but you know, like after 30 seconds, people are dropping off. YouTube's not going to keep recommending that video because they want people to watch majority of it because they want to simply keep people on their platform. And so if that's the case where we have a, where you have a good click through rate, but low average view duration, then YouTube's not going to keep recommending it to people and vice versa. If no one's clicking, but people are watching, then YouTube's not going to push it out because no one's clicking on it. So you want to have good delivery. I could go on and on about that, but you can check out my um, scripting impact template. The biggest thing that I want to point out is you want to have a call to action in your videos. This sounds super simple, but when I was reviewing people's channels, they were all like, oh, like I don't know how to get more people to my website. From YouTube and I was looking at their channel and when I was looking at it um, and I, I even watched some of it like there was no call to action and there was no link in the description it sounds super obvious but you want to have a clear call to action and you want to put the link down below in the description 
this sounds obvious, but make sure that the link is clickable. I saw so many links where I would try to click on it, but it wouldn't work. And so you want to have like the HTTPS colon slash slash www dot in your URL so that people can actually click on it. Sounds super obvious, but it's really important. And then um, also I recommend having a call to action, like not at the very end, but also I call it having like a mini call to action towards the beginning. So did you notice like in this video, I had a mini call to action towards the beginning. I was like, if you would like me to review your channel as well, then click the link down below to sign up, I said. And the reason I did that is because just statistically, more people are going to be watching towards the beginning. The typical retention on YouTube is in the shape of a hockey stick. So in other words, people will naturally drop off over time. And so let's say for easy numbers, a thousand people watch your video. And let's say you have a mini call to action 30 seconds in. Don't start off the video with a sales pitch, have a hook, you know, introduce people to a thesis statement. But if you have a mini call to action to let's say download your freebie, then you can capture people in the beginning. Because let's say at 30 seconds, 800 people are still watching. If you wait till the very end of your video to have a call to action, then maybe only 8% of people are watching. Of 1,000 people, that's only 80. So you see why the conversion rate would be much lower. And simple math, but when you have that call to action towards the beginning, be nonchalant, don't be super salesy, and always come from that heart of service. How can I give more value? And if you maybe you don't have any freebies or offers yet, a good call to action is simply to get people to comment. Get people to comment so that you can start conversations, so that you can start engaging with people. And that's actually really good for the YouTube algorithm is when people comment and when you engage with them. And that can lead to fans and customers once your offers are done in the future. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to driving traffic is the description. So we talked about thumbnails and titles, but another thing as well that matters is First off, the first 200 characters of your description should contain keywords because YouTube will analyze the first 200 characters. It'll scan it for keywords to match it with what people are typing into the search bar and also with people's interests. So if someone is interested in, let's say, crypto and you have those keywords in your description and in your title, then YouTube's more likely to recommend it in search and also in browse. Um, but also you want to have below the description, you want to have links to your paid products and services. So you don't want to overwhelm that section with all these different links. I was reviewing some channels where there was like 20 different links, and that's actually counterproductive because that many links will overwhelm people. And if they're overwhelmed, then they end up not taking action. And let's say you have 20 links, but you only had one call to action in the video to, let's say, apply for your mentorship. But the, that link is like in the middle somewhere. It's going to be very hard for people to like find the link because they have to use, again, a lot of brain energy to actually figure out which one it is. So the the easier you make it, the better, the more conversions that you will have. One last thing I will say about getting YouTube traffic is, again, I know sometimes in the beginning it could be hard to get that traction. And even if you already have it, then you can get to that next level by simply getting leverage. Simply getting leverage. And so here's the truth. The online world today is noisy and it's overcrowded. And in order to get traffic, you have to find a way to stand out in the sense that you're willing to do what a lot of people aren't willing to do. So try to reach out to a podcaster in your niche or someone in your niche who you can maybe collaborate with so that you can cross-pollinate audiences. And look at me, for example, I partnered with Kajabi to help their customers with their YouTube. And so that was a form of leverage because they promoted my channel and I got a lot of um, people over to my channel who I can serve on an even higher level. So just make sure that, that when you're doing this, that the audience that you're attracting is in alignment with what your with what your niche is all about. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get leverage. I dive deeper into one of my past videos about how you can do that, but I do want to move on to a step number four. And this one's really important because you have to realize that on average, people need to hear an offer like seven times before they actually take action. And so the fourth step is to actively engage with your audience and build a deeper relationship. So think, and don't think of it like you're trying to sell them. Think how, how can I give even more value? How can I give them the best experience possible? So maybe you send out emails to your list, giving them more value. Doesn't need to have a sales pitch, but you know, again, you're building the relationship. You're getting, you're getting them to know, like, and trust you. So I would recommend when you capture emails on YouTube, have a freebie so that you can capture emails 
having a newsletter is kind of outdated unless they're getting something in return. You know, sign up for the newsletter to get this free ebook hypothetically can work. Um, but the point is, is like nurture them through an email list. Also, I would encourage you to respond to all your comments. I like to respond to positive comments. If there's a negative one, I just ignore it. Let my audience defend me, but that's a different story. Uh, but comment, engage with their comments. I do recommend as well the community tab. A lot of people underestimate the value of the community tab, but I was telling people there were some channels who I reviewed where they had like a big audience of like, let's say 50,000 subscribers or more, but they haven't posted in a while. And so that audience is cold. In other words, they're not engaged with the YouTuber. And so um, you can use a community tab to engage with them, to ask them polls, different questions, different quizzes. And so that's a good way to engage them as well, especially if you don't have an email list right now. But another really good way is to go live. Go live. People really underestimate going live or they're too afraid, but there's so much value in going live. Maybe consider doing a QA and a se section with them. Um, maybe consider reviewing something. Maybe let's say, you know, you, you all know that I was doing the channel reviews, but maybe you're an artist, for example, and you can critique people's artwork. Or maybe you do music and you can critique people's music. Or maybe you could just have like um, some type of, like kind of like a regular video, but you're just going live, delivering that information. So what's something that maybe you can offer live? And just overall, how can you engage with your audience? The last step in all this is to analyze the data and refine your offers. This is a continual process of reviewing and refining. refining. So as you're going through this YouTube entrepreneurial journey, Yes, you have to create and refine your offers. Yes, you have to drive YouTube traffic, but you also need to analyze the data and you have to keep going through this cycle. And so there's a few different ways that you can analyze the data to determine what's working and what's not working. One, one of them is just less data-driven, but just asking yourself as well, like, how does this offer feel for me? Because maybe you try to offer a membership and maybe you do that, but maybe you don't like it. Maybe it's just not personally fulfilling and that's something you want to analyze within yourself. Is this in alignment with my lifestyle? Because sometimes you may not know until you try something. But also on YouTube, there's ways to analyze the data too. So when you're posting about different topics, look at the click-through rate. Are people clicking on this video? Look at the average view duration. Typically for click-through rate, you want to aim for above 8% for click-through rate. Anything below that, you can change the topic and the thumbnail. Not the topic, the, the title and the thumbnail. And so I actually have old videos where I changed those elements and then boom it starts to pick up. And I even analyze my video after two to three days after it's been posted. And if it doesn't have a good click-through rate, then I'll adjust those components and then boom, it can start to take off again. And then the other element is the average view duration. You can't upload a different video to YouTube. Once it's uploaded, it's there unless you completely repost the video. Um, but what you can actually do, if your average view duration is low, sometimes just making sure that the topic and the title and the thumbnail just making sure that they're in alignment with what you're actually delivering in the video, that can help increase average view duration. Because let's say hypothetically, you know, I title a video how to make brownies, but then you click on the video and it's all about how to make a, you know, a brownie smoothie. It's not totally in alignment. So just by making those adjustments, you can increase an average view duration because people are actually getting what they came there for. And then I also recommend analyzing your metrics in Kajabi or whatever platform you're using. Because let's say hypothetically, a thousand people watch your YouTube video. And let's say of those a thousand people, you look into Kajabi and you're like, oh, on that day when I got a thousand views on YouTube for that video in Kajabi, 500 people went to my landing page, but nobody, let's say, clicked. Let's say nobody clicked on the button, then you know, okay, I need to improve this landing page. But let's say, and this is a graph, by the way, where you can like analyze the different elements, look at how much, how many views you're getting, Look at how many people are going to your page, see if there's any conversions. And let's say like you have an apply now and say 500 people apply, but only like, you know, X number of people actually sign up. Then you can see where the gap is. So this is a really good chart to follow. So um, yeah, another thing you could do to get data is just simply to ask people. It sounds basic, but like, um, you know, you can ask people like, oh, like, you know, like you applied for my thing, I sent you the offer, but you didn't sign up. Like, what's the reason why? And I could tell you like, oh, like this wasn't in alignment or this isn't totally what I need. And then from there, you can continue to adjust the offer. But yeah, I could continue to go on and on about this, but I wanted to create this mini course for you to help you get to that next level with your 
business and with your YouTube channel. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you're watching this video this week, I do have a St. Patrick's Week sale where you get 10% off the first month for all my packages in the Accelerator program. So feel free to apply for that down below and then we'll just continue the conversation. Um, but yeah, that's going to help you to improve your YouTube content, to improve your landing pages so that you start to spread your message more effectively, but also help people beyond just the YouTube video to help them with your products and services. So that's that's really what this is all about coming from the heart of service, doing this for a good reason. So I'd be more than honored to guide you throughout that journey. Let me know your thoughts about this video, but yeah, that's all I have for you and I will see you for the next one.